Welcome back to the Crash Course Podcast. My name is Craig Crash Collins. No B. Scott this week. I hear the collective groan from the audience, uh, but uh, we are going to roll ahead as planned today because we've got a lot to talk about. We have um, you know, the Colts season opener. We did our Colts preview last week. We were really excited about the season, and that first game was, well, it was the first game of the season, that's for sure. Uh, also have some IndyCar to talk about as that season wraps up um, a wild finish um, to that. You know, we watched that off and on, was flipping back and forth between that and the Colts game. Uh, so a lot to talk about here in the state of Indiana, a lot to dive into here. Um, but let's go. We had some breaking news earlier today. We record on Tuesday night, so it was earlier uh, today that we got the news. It'll be yesterday if you're watching the podcast or listening um, on uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, uh, or Spotify. Um, but Rodrigo Blankenship, no longer an Indianapolis Colt. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more later, but... You know, it's one of those things where, um, you know, the blue mayor, Heather Lloyd, um, on Twitter said it the the best, which is, um, you know, there's, there were a lot of problems with the Colts on Sunday, which is why the kicker cannot be the problem. And so that's, uh, you know, what, uh, you know, kind of the thought is, and that kind of sums up my thoughts on it perfectly because you can't, you know, with, with as much, as there went wrong on Sunday, I mean, you, you just can't have the issues that you had at kicker, and it's not just limited to the field goals either. Um, so, yeah, a lot to get into. So let's go ahead uh, and just hop right in. It's going to be a little bit of a different feel to the podcast this week. The uh, If you're listening to it on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, it's going to sound relatively normal. Um, but we're going to release, instead of one big episode on YouTube, we're going to just release two YouTube videos. So we're going to release the Colts one on Wednesday, the normal one, and then we're going to uh, release the IndyCar one. So if you want to hear the IndyCar coverage, uh, go ahead and tune in. Here in a couple of days, you'll be able to get that or tune into uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify. Also, real quick, want to remind you that this podcast is brought to you by Eat Lunch and Board Game, uh, where, you t- where uh, you know Adam Collins dives into – how to build connections uh, by board games. Um, it can be heard on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and Spotify weekly. And just remember that board games build bridges. That's one of our friends of the show. We're going to get that out of the way early today, um, or at least one of them out of the way early today. But let's go ahead and get into this game summary uh, on the ga- from the game on Sunday. We start off in the first half. Colts led 3 nothing early. It seemed like there was a lot of conservative play calling going. I mean, I know this is the first game for Matt Ryan as a Colt. First game that he's had with, like, you know, a, a brand new team after, you know, what, 2008 was when he was drafted out of Boston College to the Falcons. So, you know, a brand new situation that he gets thrust into. So you kind of you understood the, conser- you know, the, the conservative nature early on. Uh, later on, Alec Pierce drops a pass in the end zone that would have put the Colts up 10 nothing. Instead, the Colts, the Colts go for a bizarre wildcat play on fourth down. Um, that's That, in my mind, I mean, you know, if you're watching on Sunday, you probably agree with me. That was when the momentum really started to shift um, because, um, you know, from that point on, it just seemed like the offense couldn't get a lot done and the defense of Houston was just insane. Um, the Colts are driving again uh, late in the second quarter when Matt Ryan is intercepted by former Colt Jerry Hughes. I saw a lot of people on Twitter after the game talking about former Colts, and I was like, it's not lost on me that Jerry Hughes used to be in the building. Um, first touchdown of the game uh, was uh, set up by a Kenny Moore pass interference call. Davis Mills connects with O.J. Howard for a 16-yard touchdown to put Houston up 10-3. Very questionable pass interference call, but it happened nonetheless. Uh, the Colts drive before the first half. Uh, the drive before the half stalls due to Braden Smith falls start. He also uh, misses a block that causes Matt Ryan to uh, to go down and fumble. Um, so the offense just wasn't getting it done. It's ten to three Texans at the half. Um, the uh, Colts were down thirteen to three. Um, another Colts drive ends in a mistake as Matt Ryan fumbles the snap around the Texans forty. Mills hits Howard again for a touchdown that puts the Texans up twenty to three. And then look ahead of the fourth quarter. That's when the Colts finally woke up and said, hey, we uh, we want to win this game. We want to win a season opener for the first time uh, since 2013. So uh, they have Colts have a first and goal early in the fourth quarter, three straight incomplete passes. It forces a field goal, which, hey, at the end of the day, that's what they needed. They were down 17. 
Defense gets the ball back uh, to the Colts with, uh, or sorry, EJ Speed forces a fumble. DeForest Buckner recovers. That leads to a Jonathan Taylor uh, touchdown run to make it 20 to 13. The defense gets the ball back uh, to the Colts with 429 left. Uh, with 80 yards for the tie, Matt Ryan finds Michael Pittman with a minute 54 to play for the Colts to tie things up at 20. Two-minute two minute drill for the Texans. It starts with the Colts kick out of bounds that forces a Texans punt. Um, then, uh, But the Colts defense forces a Texans punt, and then the Colts nearly fumble the ensuing punt, which would have been really bad. Get the ball back at their own nine-yard line with a minute 16 left. Uh, there was a fourth and one with 19 seconds left, and the Colts decided to punt it away. It was really uh, – the field position wasn't the greatest on that one, so I can kind of understand the call because if you give it back to uh, Texans, they're just the first down away uh, from being able to win it in regulation. So we're going to overtime. The Texans receive. Uh, the Colts yet again kick out of bounds. Uh, but the defense steps up, gets a couple of sacks, and forces a punt. Um, on the ensuing Colts possession, they drive down to the 42-yard line. Um, or they drive down to uh, attempt a 42-yard field goal with two minutes left, and Rodrigo Blankenship in his last field goal attempt for the Colts misses, um, which is why he is no longer a member of the Indianapolis Colts. Uh, the Texans next drive stalls at midfield. They punt with uh, 19 seconds left, and the game ends up in a 20-20 tie. Uh, Matt Ryan was 32 for 50 with 352 yards. Um, and a touchdown as well as an interception. Jonathan Taylor had 31 carries for 161 yards and a touchdown. Michael Pittman, nine catches, 121 yards, and a touchdown. Quiddy Pay had two sacks for the Colts defense. So you're kind of looking at where who can we blame for this week one loss? I mean, we already have one scapegoat in the in the terms of uh, of Hot Rod, but you know it's kind of who's to blame for the week one tie. Uh, what unit? Can you really, uh, you know, hang your hat on uh, as far as how uh, things went? Because, I mean, at the end of the day, um, you know, I kind of thought about this, and I was like, who, which phase of the game was really the most at fault here uh, for how um, things went down on Sunday? Because from one standpoint, I mean, on offense, I mean, again, like I said, Matt Ryan, first game with the new unit, first game with the new team for the first time since 2008. He's lacing them up for somebody different. Um you know, I think Indy did as well as they could have with what they had. It's going to take some time for Ryan to gel, um, and and know and and the guys know uh, the guys we knew who were going to be playmakers made plays. JT and Pittman had awesome games, awesome games. Would have liked to see the defense play better, obviously against a team like Houston, but we also have to remember that Shaq Leonard did not play. Um, so you have those two phases of the game that. We wanted to be better, but had understandable lapses, that understandable uh, setbacks, understandable holes. Um, you know, it's going to take Matt Ryan some time to get integrated. Uh, the defense will eventually get Shaq Leonard back and play a little bit better. Um, but the thing that was most alarming, and of course, you know, it's again amplified by the events of today, is just how the special teams unit played. Like that should—that's the last thing you should be worrying about if you are a you know, team that thinks it's going to the Super Bowl or think it, thinks it can contend for the Super Bowl. Um, you know, we, obviously we've got the missed field goal by Rodrigo Blankenship, who, but he also had two kicks out of bounds. That's just – it's something you rarely see to begin with, let alone t – like, I think they were consecutive kicks. Now, luckily, um, it wasn't – I don't think – I don't think the Texans did anything with the ball those two drives, but, I mean, you do that against Tennessee. You do that against – you know, Kansas City for the home opener. I mean, that's 14 points for Patrick Mahomes right there. You're already, you know, you know, you know, going up a creek without a paddle in that situation. Um, you know, Naheem, but it just doesn't, you know, rest with the with the field goal kicker. Naheem Hines near Naheem Hines nearly muffs a punt uh, late that was nearly recovered by Houston. He ref almost refused to call fair catch. There were times where I was like, is this guy ever going to call fair catch? When he, and then he finally does. And it's within the closing seconds of overtime at the five yard line, and that may not seem like a lot, but Matt Ryan has to throw over defender. I thought it might have gotten intercepted, at, like in the end zone, would have given Houston the win. Matt Ryan has to throw over a dude uh, to even get out of the end zone on the next play. So, um, it, there was sloppy play all around, um, but special teams, you know, needs like I said, needs to be the least of the worries right now for the Indianapolis Colts. Um, you know, you, you also look at it. I mean, I, I know a lot of the fodder, um, 
was about, you know, the you know, there were some people talking about, you know, the Colts' lack of weapons online. I know that's been a big uh, point of emphasis for uh, B. Scott and I. In all honesty, I don't think another weapon would have counted would have accounted for much in this case. I mean, look at some of the numbers. You know, yes, Alec Pierce dropped the only two passes that came his way. Yes, Ashton Doolin also dropped the pass uh, that would have been a touchdown. But I mean, Matt Ryan really did a great job of spreading the ball around. Um, you know, eight players caught passes for Indy Sunday. Pittman had nine catches for 121 yards. The rest of the team had 23 catches for 231 yards. So it's not like a bulk of the work went to just Pittman. Uh, 14 points came off Matt Ryan turnovers. You have the Jerry Hughes uh, interception, which Hughes, honestly, like, yes, it's Matt Ryan's fault, but at the same time, it was a great play by Jerry Hughes as well. I don't think that um, I don't think that should go unsaid. Uh, Jerry Hughes uh, made a great play there. Um, and then you have Ryan fumbling a snap. You know, there that right there, those were on two drives that the Colts, you know, could have ended up with points. So that's an 8-14 to 14 point swing right there because you're talking about either – Two field goals by the Colts or two touchdowns by the Colts. I know that doesn't equate to eight points, but I'm counting the 14 points that were scored in off of that. Um, you know, it, that's how that's how the point swing works, right? That's how that's how that goes. Um, but regardless, I mean, you add any of those points, I mean, there's the win essentially. Uh, when, you know, if everything plays out the same. So, you know, after the Pierce after Pierce drops a pass in the end zone in the first quarter, Colts call a bizarre fourth down wildcat play. So it's that kind of hamstrings things. Uh, the play calling was super conservative, as I mentioned. Um, you know, it felt like easily when uh, when uh, you know, especially when Indy had momentum, it seemed like the play calling was very conservative. Um, and you know, in a game that ended in a tie, I think there's a lot more that we can point to than a lack of wide receivers. Obviously, having another weapon or two for Matt Ryan would have been good. But I think all in all, I don't think that makes the difference on Sunday. So I don't think it can be put down to just one thing. I mean, all like I said, all phases of the game were really bad on Sunday. But I don't like, you know, as, for all our talk about, oh, the Colts need weapons. Oh, the Colts need hep- weapons. With as disappointing as Alec Pierce's debut was, with as disappointing as it was that Ashton Doolin dropped the pass in the end zone, like I don't think you can just say, well, it's because the Colts don't have enough weapons. No, it's because the Colts just played a bad game all around. Now, <laughs> you know, we were wondering when we, you know, when we made this outline, um, you know, for the podcast that, you know, would Rodrigo Blankenship make it out of September? And obviously, we were wrong. <laughs> and you know, it's it's a tough spot because you know, obviously, Rodrigo Blankenship is a fan favorite. Um, I personally love Hot Rod, um, but you know, you got to do what you got to do. As much as you know, the, the guy has a personality. I mean, you know. Career field goal percentage was 84%. He was 16th in the league in field goal percentage in 2020, his only full season. He missed a lot of 2021. Go back to 2021, you have the missed field goal and the missed extra point in the Baltimore game, which it comes out later he was hurt. Um, you have the miss in this game. Um, you know, it's it's pretty bad. I mean, um, you know, he did struggle also in big spots in Georgia. I remember uh, at Georgia, he. I mean, yes, he has like the longest field goal in Rose Bowl history, but I remember watching some games – or the SEC noon game on on a on a Saturday, um, you know I remember there was a couple against South Carolina one year that he missed. Like he he was not even automatic when he was at Georgia. He had, he was for the most part he was pretty solid, but there were you know misses in big spots where you kind of questioned where you kind of questioned like how is that going to translate over to the NFL? And it translated to him missing some big spots in the NFL as well. So um, you know the Colts bring in two new kickers. Um, which is interesting because the Colts, there were two uh, free agent kickers that had been in the building for the Colts before, Eddie Pinheiro and Michael Bagley. Uh, you know, uh, Pinheiro, 86%, Bagley, 81% field goal percentage. So not that it's, you know, all that better. And I understand the outrage. Like, I get it. I understand um, that it stinks, um, you know, that Rodrigo Blankenship field goal. I'm actually going to pull up who the Colts did sign because um, I did forget to pull that in my notes. So I I apologize for that. That's a lap by lapse by me. Um but uh the the Colts wave Rodrigo Blankenship. Um of course it doesn't say who they oh Chase McLaughlin and Lucas Har, Har- Haveris. Haverisk? Is that his name? Haverisic? Haverisic. Lucas Haverisic. Um, they're both on the practice squad now, so they're going to compete for the field goal kicker. I've heard uh, Haversisk uh, has a cannon on him, um, so that would be pretty cool if the Colts were able to get him in the building. 
So, yeah, I mean, it stinks. Um, I kind of relate it to the closer position in baseball where, like, yeah, I mean, you can have, you know, it's 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 awesome when you have a guy who, you know, has this insane, insanely awesome personality. And, you know, by the way, he always he also makes kicks. He's the hero in those situations. It's great. But once things start to go wrong, I mean, the, it's just an easy kind of rip the Band-Aid off kind of move. Hey, you know what? Our, our closer just blew a save. All right, someone else is going to go in the ninth inning now. Oh, our kicker just missed a field goal. All right, well, we got to get rid of him um, because it's just something that you kind of have to have to save face on. You know, it's like I said, it stinks, um, but it's understandable. Um, I know that uh, – you know, you know, I I was an advocate of him staying another week because I mean, you look at the, you look at the weekend that was. Sometimes it's just a weird weekend when it comes to field goals, and I think I think th- this is the final thought kind of on that, is that, you know, you know, if if it were any other situation, if if Blankenship had just been a little bit better, you could kind of write this off on like, yeah, this was just a weird weekend where, you know. The Titans kicker misses a field goal at the end of the game against New York. You know, Shane um, McManus, not McManus, excuse me. Um, I can't think of the name of the uh, kicker for the uh, for the, McPherson, the kicker for the Bengals. He misses an extra point. Um, kicker misses a field goal for the Falcons too. I think like in a in a weekend where there was a lot of missed field goals, you could kind of maybe write it off as like, hey, it's just one of those weird weekends. But the fact of the matter is. You know the track record for Blankenship wasn't great, and this was just kind of the final straw. And I think it kind of has to happen in a season when you've got aspirations to win the AFC South. You're hoping to finally get back to playoff success. This is just an easy thing to kind of do to be like, hey, we're serious about this. We're not gonna. We don't have time to let things linger. We shouldn't have. There shouldn't have even been a question of the Colts winning Week One against Houston. So we're not gonna mess around anymore. We got to make that move. Got to finally clear the building and I, I don't love it but I understand it um, and let's see hopefully we've got some better kickers in the house now so um, so yeah we're gonna uh, move on to uh, IndyCar now um, so if you want to see that again on the YouTube channel uh, tune in later this week 